people which are organizing this uh, semester here for giving the opportunity, first of all, to stay here and, and do research on these great pursuits and also to give this talk. This talk is about uh, is a, a progress report uh, based on the three papers, two are already written and a third is just about to be written. Uh, so the, so uh, I should say it's going to be a, oh, so, so this is not working well. Ah, okay. This is a joint work <coughs> of Costa Tiros, which was a former postdoc in Toronto, now at the University of Warwick. Um, so as I said, this is a work in progress. The theorems <coughs> uh, not attri attributed are from these papers. The conjectures are the, also from these papers. Okay, so the, the outline. So I'm going to, uh, so the, the thing here to notice is this dual Ramsey theorem. And what <coughs> to explain this, why we call it a dual. Uh, so I basically started introducing the dual Ramsey theorem and then uh, I go to a context, a structure or tree, and then try to dualize the, the other, the, the part one on that context. So, okay, so what is the project? How do you explain? explain this. So there is that uh, <laughs> the dualization uh, concerned here inversing the mapping rather than the current the injection. We are calling this rejections. Uh, for example, in the Ramsey theorem, it typically is re written in terms of partitions of the set rather than injection. Say k partitions rather than a k element subset. We are calling the k partition rather than k element subset. Uh, we can also formalize this in a very precise way. I mean, I'm not concerned with this. Uh, the reason is because we are, we are still quite far away to properly understand this dual Ramsey theory, especially dual structural Ramsey theory. See, this is attempt to, uh, uh, sorry, this is attempt to, uh, to understand <coughs> the dual Ramsey theorem for trees, the simple structures, tree, rather than linear order and set. In order sets is basically the classical uh, dual Ramsey theory. So you want to you, you want to uh, add some structures. So the first thing to add is to understand the tree. So here the part two is to uh, I'm, I'm, I'm recalling you a, a rather deep uh, injective Ramsey theoretic results of Hapeloikli, and this is what we have the result the new result that we have. Okay, so let's go. So. Final tuning theorem, it's a rather simple looking uh, result. It's typically credited to Folkman, but it's due to independently to Rado and Sanders. It says the following, you have a number for a given K and a number of colors, you have a number F, so that for every power set of, of on a set X of canonically bigger or equal than that, there is a family of the near color, the power set in all subsets of that are actually non-empty, really. Uh, then you will find a family of the joint sets, in other words, some sort of a copy, dual copy of, of K, so that all unions that you can form, non-empty union, are monohromatic. So it's a one-dimensional uh, dual Ramsey, let's say. One-dimensional pigeonhole. So that's the finite union theorem. So it was discovered quite old. It took a quite a long time to actually uh, go to infinite versions. And also, I should have, you will see later on that the infinite theorems tend to be considerably deeper and harder in this in this domain. I, I guess so. That's the prototype result, and that in the simplest possible form. And now, if you are uh, infinite, how infinite would look like? So it took a quite a long time to actually get this way. So, uh, this was, by the way, the major progress in Ramsey theory, Carl from Simpson paper. It was uh, basically, uh, basically some sort of a revolution in that area. So what they have done is basically they lifted that theorem to infinity. So you're now, uh, so now you're coloring the subset of the power set. Of course, for this coloring, you have to make it Borel or something reasonable. Meaning that you have Borel or something, you know, measurable coloring. Then you have an infinite sequence by the joints and all possible unions that you can think of are monochromatic. You can form are monochromatic. So 
with the infinite. This is again the one dimension. In some sense, it's a two dimensional. This is the way this is a result carbon. You, if you think about it in terms of partition, that will be a two partition. Because you know, the, the other partition contains the zero. Uh, I think it's, this, is way, this way is a better, better <coughs> for what I want to say. And also to see this. I do a Ramsey theorem for the infinite. Uh, simply say, you will simply go to a, you're coloring the infinite families of probably joint sets. And then says, you know, you're coloring the all partitions in infinite, of omega into many pieces. And if you want to find one partition, so all whose coarsest partition are mathematical. That's usually how it, this result is stated. But uh, if you, uh, you see, this result is uh, non trivial even if you didn't go to infinite, say, by say, uh, three element families of uh, probability joint set. It's already a challenge, or even, uh, but I mean, this is the, infi the infinite one from which the finite follows. The finite, if I just to recall you, the finite one is a well known result, which is really called the Graham Rothschild <coughs> theorem, it's rather uh, well known. So that's uh, how the how this is done. Uh, so you have this uh, finite physical principle. You have a natural, uh, natural question about getting to infinity, and you are suddenly entering into a uh, into uh, into domain of a nice coloring, susceptible <coughs> necessarily, and then you have to uh, <coughs> then you have these sort of results. You, you I'll later on point out about the proofs, how these results were proved, because they are going to be interesting for us. What is this U of D? U of? The last thing, U of D. Yeah, so this means that, well, it's uh, L, uh, U of uh, omega really should be, but okay, the U of D is, uh, so the set for, so U of, so maybe this is typo, let me just uh, see. Uh, I guess this is U omega, I guess. So all, all uh, so infinite. Yeah, okay, so form a U of D is the all, all, all subsets that you can form by taking the unions of elements from D. So U of D somehow, you're, if you think of omega as a singletons, if you think of omega as a singletons, then that would be a corresponding notation, right? This is all possible. I should have, have a little definition here about that, okay. Okay, so now we so we will come back again to this. Uh, now I want to uh, expose you some uh, important injective, not in a dual, okay, about the trees. Actually, perhaps the most important such, both in the finite and infinite case. Okay, so you, we, I need a some notation to express this because uh, again, the, so you have a tree which is a root at finitely branching with no maximal nodes. These results are going to be all interesting even if you take a binary tree and some fixed degree or even homogeneous trees, etc. But it's very important for a general, uh, if it's all finitely branching tree with no max terminal nodes. So this is the uh, object that we consider. We have this notation and this, is a no uh, this notation I needed for to tell the nth level. So the nth, so distance from the root n. Uh, okay, so so these are these nth levels. Uh, and for a subset of the tree, I look at the levels it hits from the level set of the, of d. I need that notation. So this is the, the typically you skip some level. Same thing is for the subtrees. I mean, you have a, if you can think about it as a D as a subtree, its levels may be quite different than the levels of, may have nothing to do with the levels of, of, of T, but here I, I record the, how, the, how the D acts on the levels of T rather than D itself. Rather. Okay, now we go, so what is uh, more interesting, go to high dimension. So I take a D vector of tr such a trees. Or oh, again, the same sort of a trees. And now rather than a, okay, so it's just trees, so rather than a, so now I would like to go to uh, talk about the subsets of the, or a, some, some sort of a tree associated to it. So it's a natural tree associated to a sequence of trees. This is this tree product, union of products of level. This is a tree under Cartesian ordering. So 
it's uh, and its level is exactly <laughs> the product of n level so there's no surprises here otherwise if you take uh, if for a static result actually you don't need that uh, but uh, the, the point of the Kamperovsky theorem is not really in, in this but in the notion of a largeness and this is this domination okay ordering the coordinate wise successors are these as you could imagine and now a sequence is called vector subset and now we see vector subset being a subset of for each di is a subset of ti but important thing is that they have to have the le same levels they have to hit the same levels so i don't consider population so there is a corresponding so in some senses think about the d as kind of di as a subset and here we see the same level and now there's a key notion of a density but maybe here we have to pose a little bit so this is kind of a, it is a metric notion. The T itself is some kind of a metric structure, and these that epsilon densities correspond to sort which we call epsilon net. So what it says for every n there is an n, so large enough so that everything on the n level <coughs> and above T. Uh, by the way, think about the T root. So there is actually no successor. Everything is there. So everything is dominated by something. So D dominates. In other words, if a D hits levels L1, L2, etc., then say uh, typically you, you would say L K level dominates L K level of D dominates the K level of T point wise, if you in every point for every. So there's that notion of a largeness. So we see this is maybe the better na name would be a T would be a large T T. T comma little t large or a t large. So that's a notion of a large. So uh, again, is around the theory is usually you, you count the large structure by numbers or uh, uh, being isomorphic to some structure or having us. Here is that the tree itself gives you notion of a largeness. Notice that this notion of largeness changes as you change as you change the level. From the carnality point of view, the tree are, can be profusely branching, so higher higher the level is, the more things to dominate. So there's actually no, so typically the, induct, the usual inductive proofs here will not work. Usual inductive proofs for these sorts of results. Because typically you don't know how big homogeneous sets or monochromatic sets you need to construct because it depends where you, where you believe you will be able to build, uh, build your large. And this could fail. Okay, the dense means dense everywhere about the roots. Uh, so actually, this is that uh, example for D, which is the, the, the first the first level of D dominates the, the T, the second dominates uh, uh, immediate successor, etc. That's the picture. That, so it, it could be a, and that's the result of how projected 1966 was motivated by a problem by consistency result in set theory. Uh, it was a crucial lemma. Go producing a model of a ZF with no choice but with the Bruan prime ideal theorem being true in the model. Okay, so we have vector three, you have a vector subset which is dense, arbitrary. And then for every coloring into two pieces, T and its complement, you see this, this is an asymmetric version of the the only two color P and its complement, there exists a subset dense, which is either there is a vector subset which is either dense uh, everywhere and is a subset of D. And either the first color is very large or the other color is somewhere large. The T complement is somewhere large, but in the same sense. So this largeness is controlled by, by T, by the trees. And that's that. Uh, this uh, maybe is difficult to adjust why such a theorem would be uh, rather important, but I guess uh, I, maybe you, you could try to uh, reformulate it in the metric terms and you see it's actually a very natural mathematical statement about the epsilon nets in the product of space, in the product of metric spaces, it will become a rather natural statement. And for the trees, uh, maybe not, uh, not clear why, why this is a Ramsey theoretic statement at all, I mean, typical. And that's, you see, by going to a, a different notion, a strong subtree, which looks like a weaker result, but actually is equivalent to it. 
and is more in the sp spirit of the classical Ramsey theorem, or the Ramsey theorem itself. You know, because you're typically you're, you're, you're carrying the copies of a structure, the morphic copy of a fixed, some fixed structure. That's in Ramsey theory, that's what we usually do. And there you are carrying a, a something, you have an as asymmetry. And so this is how you get asymmetry. You have the notion of a strong subset. So H is a subset which has a, a root. Every level of S preserves the levels, although uh, different, you know, it, it might skip some level. But every level of S is a subset of some level. And uh, that key, number three, is key thing here. If you split, if, uh, if you choose, if you decide to choose S, little s, in S, then you must extend inside S all immediate successor of S in T. So this was the, the, the big tree. T has, gives you a notion of a largeness which you must respect. So there's the, the point of this. Uh, of this. Back? So yes, yes. So it's uh, some sort of a copy of the tree. It's still a very <coughs> nice copy in a sense, the most natural thing. What is uh, unusual here is that you must preserve splitting. But in this sense, you, uh, yeah, sorry, oh. yeah, sorry, you must preserve branching. Yes, yes, yes. yes. The, by the level of S, you mean um, level in its own, uh, in its own order. It, its own level is a subset of the level of T. In, in general, subsets this may not be true. May have may nothing to do with each other. But here, you want them to be. In some sense, if you think about uh, the uh, T to be a binary tree, complete binary tree, then S is literally its own copy, very natural copy. Literally, is a morphic copy, but uh, but if T is profusely branching, this is something else. As in, in some sense, the power of the theorem becomes exactly uh, if you use the profusely branching tree. Uh, this is a, a possible way to think about that. Okay, well, you choose the root, and then you must ex extend all immediate successor, etc. On some level up, there are lots of things to skip. I guess if you think about the inductive, if you think about you want to prove this run. Uh, try to prove this is the, by the way, good exercise. If you've never seen this, try to prove this result in one dimension. Not quite trivial, though you would expect to be a rather simple in dimension one. It's not quite trivial because you have to respect the level. In other words, you cannot use the obvious fact that if you have a subset of the tree, then it's its or its complement must be somewhere dense. It's not as obvious as that. Slightly more complex, but not very, very much. And now we have to go to a dimension D. So you have to, again, back to a strong subtree, meaning the strong subtree, the level sets are the same. And this is a strong tree version of HL pointed by Lever. This notion of strong subtrees was uh, I think a great uh, invention. Because uh, I, first of all, you don't lose the power of the theorem. You don't lose the power of the theorem. Very easy to deduce one from the other, vice versa. But what is in this here that you can build Ramsey theory on it. If you take this as a one dimensional physical principle, you can go to high dimension, even the dimension infinity. For example, you can have a theorem which says that if you have a, any finite branching tree, then if you fix a k and you color the all, all uh, strong subtree of height k, then there is a strong subtree of height omega, so all of, all of which strong subtree of height k are monochromatic. And if I notice if the tree is profusely branching, strong subtree of height k are not necessarily isomorphic to each other. So you are really coloring non isomorphic structures. So you would say, why I could not uh, find a bad coloring? What's the reason? <coughs> In the usual Ramsey theorem, all, all k element sets are identical. I mean, isomorphic. So you, you know, here you, they may not be. And still, you have the exact analog of the Ramsey theorem. But I will not go to that direction. I go try to try to dualize this theorem. In other words, the attempt is to say, okay, I have this deep theorem about about ejected theorem about trees, have dualistic theorem. I want to find its dual form. First of all, I would like to do it in dimension one first, and then climb up dimension. So dimension one. So what? So again, the, uh, uh, what is the analogy? Uh, analogy is very simple. I mean, omega is a tree, right? It's a branch. And now you. So I look at this Carlson Simpson on omega, I try to put it on the tree. So very, <coughs> very simple as idea, right? Unfortunately, it turned out to be a, a rather difficult task, more difficult than we thought. 
Okay, so we have this stuff. So we write to color the subsets. We are now, in, in, we write to, again, think about T as a, as a if you, if <coughs> single tree. So we are able to color the subsets of a tree. And we have a Ramsey theorem there. And obviously, the, the opponent can, all, can look at the, what are the minimal elements of this subset. If there are more of them, then you can color the, uh, the uh, mod something, the cardinality mod something. So there is no Ramsey theorem there, right? Because if you want to have a large, so typically you want to uh, uh, avoid this. So therefore, you add this condition of a minimum, that every set has a minimum. Otherwise, uh, you want to avoid this bad coloring. So then you. If you allow sets of arbitrary beginning uh, minimums, then you don't have a theorem. You don't even have a Ramsey degree, and you can't even have a bounded number of colors. So this is a natural thing. That's what you want to color. What do you mean by minimum? The, the minimal the element. The minimal. I mean the, just a minimum. The one element. The root. Uh, although they may not be trees, so they may not be subtrees, but anyway, subset which have a minimum. So it has no predicate. <coughs> yeah. Everything is you use a subset, this cross, cross, look, cross T is a tree. Uh, cross T is a tree. Yes. D minimum, so it has a minimum. Yeah. That was my question. Yeah, okay. I should, I'm not, I swear my English is so good to, uh, to put, where well, I should put, uh, yeah, okay. I see the difference, what should I say, so this is clear. I want uh, the set has a minimum uh, least, see, on, on least element. You see, on omega, every subset has a minimum, right? So <laughs> you, we don't, in the Carlson system, you don't say this, right? But that was important thing, as a matter of fact. So there's a minimum. And there's, of course, the uh, uh, counter topology from there, uh, you know, simple metric, compact. Okay, so this subspace, what is a this subspace? Well. Now we like to say this subspace is something large, something that you like, to, <coughs> which means some sort of a dual copy of T itself. Because remember, you want to color the surjections. So you want to get the, the monochromatic thing should be some sort of a dual copy of, of itself. So this, this uh, uh, bold face D is that notion of uh, largeness has to be a. Okay, so, so it's the family which is indexed by some uh, vector subset. D, product of this, yeah. They are disjoint, as we had before. And the minimum is, is itself. Minimum of UT is T. We are coloring. So this is the large subspace. These are the object that we like, if, if D is large. And of course, large D, I, you can even guess what the, what the, which condition on D I want. It has to be dense. Because that was the part of the Hartle-Weyhe theorem. That was the condition of Hartle-Weyhe theorem. That's what we wanted there. We wanted to have a monochromatic dense set or a somber dense. So that's how it, this is, this is this chaotic <coughs> thing that it looks like, which means that you have to produce something like that. In your monochromatic thing has to look something like that. Should start somewhere and then whatever D tells you, you have to have there and the sets are disjoint and the, and I put this picture, is there, it, it, uh, this picture not, is not troublesome, troublesome if you think that you are coloring just a single element, just, a, uh, just one, one such a blob. But if you color two such a blob, this is the nightmare. This is a mess because if you see a two such a blob, you see the way how they oscillate. So the opponent can give you a very bad coloring meaning that you can't stabilize the color. So, but anyway, at the moment, it's okay it's like that. Okay, the, uh, it's the span of, uh, of this, all unions that you can form, provided they have a minimum. The span of such as all the unions, that you can, even infinite union, provided they have a minimum. So that's a natural. And one is subsets of the other, if, uh, if, if all elements, if, I, if this collection is a subset of the other collection. Either. The elements of, the, of one is, uh, equal to, is obtained by taking the union of the, of the other. And notice that if I have, a, if I know that the subset, then I know that the, that the index set is also a vector subset. So it's not difficult because minimum set no is minimum. So. And this is the theorem. So exactly what was in the half likely only the dual form. So again, so we have a vector tree, 
and the coloring of all subsets of T that have minimum, that with the minimum. And take arbitrary denser vector subset. And, uh, and, and possible choice of the of the blobs with this index setting, the D subspace. Take your favor D subspace, index by that. Then there is a further subspace which is inside the blue, or it is, uh, and it's moreover its index set is dense, everywhere dense, or it or there's a subset which is red and its index set is somewhere dense. So it's like a half elliptic, but only in the dual form. This is you can also think about this as a subjective map. This is exactly the dual form of this. So that's the theorem that we write to prove. Prove to give you some sense of what it involves. So this is the one-dimensional result. One-dimensional result. Coloring is just a subset, rather than a pair of sets, triple of sets, etc. We'll, we'll think about this later. We'll, we'll, we'll come to that later. Okay. Let us see how. First of all, consequences. Consequences maybe are easier to think about in the terms of the strong subtrees because remember in the strong subtrees we are having a copy of itself. So you have vector tree, strong vector sub subtree, and you have a family of these blobs indexed by it. Then you can refine it to be monochromatic. So now it's a symmetric result. It's a very finite coloring. There's a family indexed, family of these blobs indexed by a strong subtree, which is monochromatic. So this is the one dimension. Uh, this is a dual version of the labor of the labor result, <coughs> and the causal Simpson gets because the omega is a tree. So it's, uh, there's always minimum. So it's okay. okay, so that's the one dimensional case. And how do you prove? Now it comes the question: How do you prove this result? And maybe uh, part part of the reason why I wanted to expose this because if uh, I think currently there is a quite a strong uh, a push towards developing the dual Ramsey theory. And the, uh, I, I noticed many of the, uh, if it's dual structure around the theorem, if you, if, if you know a little bit of structure around the theorem, you will, figure out, you will see that the Hartel, uh, hell jewett theorem is rather important there. It's a task, uh, I'll state in a moment, and here it is the result actually. It's very well known fact, one of the corners or, or the field. So you are coloring what? So you have a number of colors and a number of letters, finite alphabet. You look at the L words, see coloring of L words, and there's a variable word mean. Word with, there's a variable shows up, and all such uses are monochromatic. Commuter line, typically people call it commuter line, which is monochromatic. So the structural runs the theory. theory uses this principle as one of the crucial. Now you will see in, in, in the way that we are proving this result that we actually have to modify this considerably, which means that, that if you want to uh, uh, dualize some particular on the result, you have to develop the corresponding Hell-Jewett theorem. So they tend to be very, very different, not, uh, not uh, obviously related to the original one, although the language is useful. You know, it, I mean, the, this idea is useful. Okay, so that's the classical. And you see, a part of the progress, why the Carlson Simpson had the progress of the result, is exactly because they were able to prove this analog of the infinitary Hell-Jewett theorem. Because if you call the semi-group of words, there's an infinite sequence of variable words and all of the concatenation. Very interesting here to, uh, very important here to see which concatenations they decided to do. They decided to start from zero and run all integers all up to end and stop. So you can do, you can imagine a little bit more challenging thing, actually considerably more challenging to type skip some of the indexes. But still, this is also possible, but not by the methods that they had. This was deeper fact. The one, this one it has a considerable story around it. There's even a density version of this result that we have to prove. So it's a, the, well, there is no density version of the other one. We call it a conditional. It's the conditional span of this. Conditional, mean that you rather unconditional that you say x n zero lambda zero coordinate the x n one is not so. Okay, so that's the key for the Carlson Simpson. I guess it makes sense because if you think about 
what these blobs are, these are really, really you can think about this uh, as a variable words. So we are with the one, uh, actually the alphabet zero and the one variable. Okay, so somehow you, you, you know, it's not, uh, you know, it's not so unnatural to actually try to do it. Actually, that's what the causal scenes of have. Now we have to uh, we have to adjust this for trees, and let us see what that is. And, um, okay, so again we have a vector tree or a single tree. I guess that maybe I should have said it just for one tree, even this is interesting one single tree rather than a vector tree. Okay, so what is the now? What are now words? Now words are located. They are quite conditional. They have to live on a stripe. We are tagging the digit there, or from the alphabet, the letters. So that's what. So these are what the words are. And this is what, unfortunately, so this is highly conditional because you have to respect the structure of the tree. You can't uh, skip, uh, you can't. Uh, and put them independently. These are the words that uh, that are defined or on the on the stripe in the tree level, for example. So this is how they look. So if you have digits, you are adding there. You are labeling them. You are labeling on a particular stripe. And of course, you are concatenating in an obvious way. I mean, you are you can concatenate in the obvious way if, if, a, if a top of one is the bottom of the other, you can concatenate again of the function. This is a function, right? So, okay. And the variable words, that's a more challenging. What's relevant here? Took us uh, some time to figure out what is relevant here. So a variable word must be indexed by a level. You see, there's a, on, on the ball face, level, vector level subset. So each so this is a sequence of subsets. Each subset is a subset of a single level. So that, there's a single level, or so the di is a subset of the, of the t t1, d1 is a subset p1 and uh, k, I guess, k in between. And d2 is a subset of t1, k, etc. So the level subset. You, I'll give you a picture. So it's a natural thing. And now what is a natural thing? You, you're allowed to use variable, one for each Different, different variable for different f. And okay, so what is this? So again, you have a minimum. S is a minimum for the places where you put a variable. And now there's that uh, interesting thing that you don't want the opponent to have option to uh, color, to, to give a bad coloring. So, you, you, uh, so there's no oscillation between two different variables. The level sets are the same. The, the, level, the levels that are hit are the same. U sub s and V sub s the same? Or? Uh, this is typo. This is to be V. This is typo. This comes from uh, copying and pasting somewhere. Yeah. Sorry about this. Yeah. Okay, so that's how they look. So if you take a one, a V s zero, it, 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 uh, it acts here. V s one acts somewhere, etc. They must intersect the same level. If you pick in a one or in a some level, the other one must have something there, although not really, not uh, not copying or something. That's more or less how the variable word looks like. So there is the variable, variable variable span is d. That's a notation there. Bottom is n, top is n, etc. Then you are doing uh, uh, the usual. Uh, so you are you are taking m less than m, all possible m less than n, and the all possible vector level subset. Only one for a fixed two n and then only one set there. <clears throat> okay, so this is the collection of variable words. And now you can do su obvious substitutions. Uh, there's no nothing surprising here. You substitute V S by A S. Uh, so there's no substitute. Uh, so all possible substitutions is this notation all possible. This is a co this corresponds to a line in the classical classical context. Con the constant span of S, so commutator line, gener commutator line generated by S. And now subspace. Subspace is given, you see, a subspace now is given by a sequence of variable words, infinite. Somehow it corresponds to the subspace that we wanted to, to have in that theorem that we are trying to prove. So the bottom of the first is zero, and then they climb up, 
one after the other. The index, the, the, the variables, uh, the, the, the index of VIs must be, uh, must be, uh, uh, they, they are ve vector subset, meaning that they are going to hit the same level and one for each, for each index n. And they have to be dense. I mean, we are not interested in subspaces where the, where the indexes are uh, not large in a sense of original tree. We are just interested in that. And then you look at the corresponding constant span. So this is a large subset of the set of all words which can obtain. So all this is rather natural. And you have a, for two fast they write x less than y if the corresponding <coughs> uh, constant span is a subset. That would also imply as before that, that these, the index sets vi's have to be a subset of the corresponding for the other, for y. And this is the Hjald, infinite Hjald unit for trees. This is the, the, the heart of the matter of that other result. It's a PJ for, it's actually PJ for principle for some other results. Uh, it's an interesting, uh, which is a, a diversion from the Carlson Simpson methodology. They could deduce the theorem from the corresponding version of that, but we could not. And the reason is, uh, is, uh, is the compactness of that space. Uh, here we cannot, we have to actually build uh, another infinite dimensional version of this. Any let's find a dimensional says what uh, what what rather similar what was saying in the Carlson Simpson case. So you have a vector tree, finite alphabet, finite coloring of the constant words, meaning no variables. Then every subspace has a further subspace which is the, whose uh, constant span is monochromatic. So no, notice what's interesting here is that uh, these um, the lengths. The length of the of the of this uh, of the stripes, as you define, they get bigger, bigger. So, so interesting. Suddenly, you are every fi uh, for a finite coloring, you have, you have for a complicated coloring, you would probably perhaps need to take a faster, a faster sequence. Uh, but uh, uh, what is interesting that this, even though you are taking the faster sequence. Uh, What's important, and actually that's the whole difficulty in this result, is there is that index set of variables, the di, d, and these sets, as you go up, as you go up, they have to dominate more and more levels. They have to be large, they cannot be, you cannot shrink them too much. They have to dominate corresponding levels. For example, this has to dominate some level. If this was increasing in numeration, then this has to dominate some level, this other one, at least this bigger level, this other one bigger, etc. So they dominate eventually all levels. So what I'm saying, inside this result is also a uh, hyperbolic result there in some well, sense, must be, right? Hyperbolic theorem must be inside the proof of this. Statement. Uh, okay, so now to, uh, to, to actually uh, prove the, uh, the result that we wanted to prove, uh, we have to, yeah, okay. We have to go to infinite dimension. So you have to infinite sequence of words. You have to have a result for the coloring infinite sequence of words. Remember, because we are interested in coloring the infinite sets. But you, if, you, if, if, you, if you kind of imagine that these blobs there are finite, then in some sense that would follow from this uh, Hell Jewish theorem for finite. But we, are, we intend to cover infinite ones, so therefore you have to have a have to have a coloring result for infinite sequences. And so we have a natural, natural thing there. So there's a sequence of the words with no variables so that, that, they, that they match each other in the trans, the bottom of the next is the top of the previous. <laughs> and for a given subspace, they cross all these words that you can find inside, inside the span. So initial, like in the Carlson Simpson, you take from zero to n span up to zero n should be inside. So that's the infinite sequences inside the subspaces. So this is a relativized version of the infinite sequence inside the space. And that's the infinite one which we needed for the. So we have a finer hover than every nice coloring of the set of all words and every subspace is a further subspace of all whose sequences that you can find there, infinite sequence that can find there monochromatic. That's the 
fine now. From, from, from this, it's uh, rather simple to prove the other result. High dimension. So now uh, th that's now a very interesting situation. So what's the problem? High dimension. So now we want to color the two, two blobs. And suppose we want to uh, do something so that the minimums are, are related in the tree order. And here's the bad coloring. You look at this level and look at the parity of this, or uh, modulo k, something, parity of this intersection. So there's no even finer degree, so there's a problem. So if you want to color the pairs, we have this bad coloring. So two blobs, one, suppose that you are, you, you have to decide which two blobs, if they're always related or never related, whatever. Let us look at the related. Then you can uh, do this. So there's no even finer degree. Okay. So let, let's, what do we do? Well, I guess in round theory, you, you don't, uh, you don't prove what you like. You prove what you can, what must, I meaning that you are computing rounds and degree in some sense. You don't have option. This is the bad coloring. You say, well, I found one. Maybe tomorrow somebody is going to find me another one, etc. And this process never stops. And it turns out that actually there's the only one. There's no other. That's the. But before I I I I I, I motivate this, I want to recall your rather deep result, Dua Ramsey theory and Graham Rothschild in this particular form. That's all. In other words, I'm not saying a K partitions. I'm ignoring the one cell of the partition, the one which contains zero with axis set of integers, or initial segment of integers. So again, so what it says, there is a for every k and l, so this is the k-dimensional version of the result. C number of color, the l is the space that you like to have. C is the number of color. There is an integer rather large, but not particularly, not very. Today we actually have a good bounce on that. Okay, so that if you color the, uh, all fa k families of pairwise disjoint subsets of x, so remember there we just uh, look at the k equal one, so just one subset. There is a family which is which has a l many set disjoint, so there are all further k element subsets you can form inside the dimensional matrix. That's the dual Ramsey theorem. There's a literally a finite dual Ramsey theorem where injections injections are intertwined. Graham Rothschild result is very useful, very useful, very easy to use also. So it's good to know. It's a result, one result which is in the dual theory, if you don't know any result, this is the one you should try to remember. Because it's uh, easy to remember, it's simply, uh, okay. For example, try to use this to show that in the state there's class of finite graphs. Complete graphs have a degree one. Coloring the say uh, K clicks. Have a, and the reason is why? Because the, every graph is a disjoint in the graph of our mirror set. So this result gives you that. What I think is very easy to use the result. And also it gives you rather, uh, it shows you how much more powerful is the reject theory. Okay. So this is the compromise. First compromise. We, we bound the degree. Degree is now fixed bounded. So it's a bi bi binary, ternary, etc. tree. And now, so that you avoid this coloring, so you don't allow the other node on the same level. So you, in other words, you want to have a copy of the tree, but a little bit skewed, so that the, the opponent cannot use this coloring. So this is, we call it a skew subtree. Uh, it's a rather natural, okay? And T has a minimum, every maximum J has It's a very nice tree of, in other words, was the copy of a B to the less than K. Literally, it's a morphic copy, but in some particular way. Immediate successor have to extend immediate successor the same in the, as in the notion of a strong subtree. So the notion of a largeness which T imposes is respected. And now the new thing is that every level of T, every level, Tm and every, must have a, a different height. They are on a different height. They're never, and moreover, on the same level, they are different heights. Respecting the half ordering. Of course, the reason is because if you don't reflect, the opponent can 
give you current how this oscillates with that. So let us say there's no oscillation, they respect each other. So let's q sub three, I guess uh, there's a picture, I, I, you can imagine it, I guess you simply go sidewise respecting the tree. A subspace, again, subspace would be a subspace. Uh, so what is that you are looking at all, all sets that have a minimum as before, but except now you go to dimension k rather than dimension one. So k dimension subspace is the one in this best q subtree. Usual as you would expect. Index by q subtree. So a k dimension subspace, as in the case of the Graham Rothschild, is a question of k perfectly joint sets. There, because the tree is omega, everything is nice, everything has a minimum, and everything is a skewed subtree, and everything is no, anything you want uh, is there preserved. And now, further subspace, you would imagine that the elements of this further subspace are obtained by taking the union of the, of the previous subspace. So it's another natural notion of a subspace, further subspace. And this is the, how they again look, except that now, as I see it now, that think about now that you are coloring now more than one blob. So now they can, for example, the relationship of these two blobs there is quite different than, than, than some other two in the same set of position. So this means it will not, this will not be monochromatic. So that's basically sort of a thing that we have to solve. Okay, so this dimension K and this theorem is true, there is a number. Um, so there is a number so that for every integer bigger than that number, uh, this look, uh, yes, there is a typo here, this R is C. This R is C, yes. The number of color is C usually, so, okay. So your coloring, C coloring of the K dimensional subspace, there is an L dimensional subspace or all further K dimensional subspace is monochromatic. So it's uh, exactly the dual Ramses for trees in the category of trees, where the strong subtree is replaced by skewed subtree. So you are losing the strongness, but you are, which means that you are, the only thing that you're not respecting is the other level. Everything else you're respecting, and you have a dual form of the result. And this result is uh, several degrees, about, uh, say, five degrees more complex to prove than the one dimensional. One, uh, basically one paper for that. Okay, so this is that, as you would expect. And the further work, which is now in progress, which you are basically go to dimension, infinite dimension. So you want to have an infinite, you're now calling the infinite subspaces. So as in the case of the Carlson Simpson, you're calling the infinite sequences of curvature joint sets in the Borel way or a Simpson way. Here you are calling the infinite collections. Uh, you, know, you are calling the uh, collection of blobs indexed by skew, infinite skew subtrees of infinite height. In a Borel way or a Fuslin way. And at the moment is the conjecture which we are checking. So if you have a Fuslin measurable coloring of all infinite dimensional subspaces, there's infinite subspaces, who all whose further infinite subspaces are the same color. So this is the analog of the Carlson Simpson dual, dual on the infinite or Galvin Frickley dual. Carlson Simpson is a dual Galvin Frickley, and so this is the that level for the tree. So okay, I think that uh, this would be a good place to, for me to stop. I should ask for a question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, then, no, uh, okay, okay, sure. Questions are of course welcome. Uh, more than welcome, yes, yes. Uh, we'll yes, this. okay, good question. Okay, it's a, you see, people have uh, looked at the dual, uh, the people have looked at the structure around the theory and tried to simply dualize the proofs. And it worked quite uh, for quite a while. The only problem is that it never worked when you had a forbidden structure. 
and you simply get a model with no forbidden configuration. And typically application, you need them. So, for example, tree is giving you forbidden configuration, saying you must split this that way. I don't want any sequence of blobs. So the next, okay, so the after, after, I mean, after the tree, of course, the next will be, uh, um, okay, so let's see, be, be, be careful about that. What I will do next, I think that I will go to the finite theory and go to, uh, uh, I mean, well, try to prove my favorite dual around the theory, and this is the following. Uh, I think this is a, a problem or a conjecture of a three of us. Because I think it's a good test. It's a good test, what I mean for forbidden configurations and uh, and it's also it's so simple that you can actually not forget, you're not, not going to forget if you get early in this room. Uh, okay, so problem, uh, uh, prove, uh, or uh, is it, or, or simply for a project, or prove, do a finite, dual, Ramsey theorem. Meaning Graham Rothschild, remember Graham Rothschild was about the partitions, you're coloring the K partitions. And you're having L partitions, all of whose case of partitions are more homotic. Do finite dual around the theorem in the Graham Rothschild. For forbidden structure, equi partitions. So all pieces equal size. Typical good. In other words, prove that for a finite measure algebra, there is a Ramsey degree or something. The measure, finite measure algebras form a Ramsey class in the homogeneity. That's an, the typical application such as that. This would be rather a useful result for many, in many contexts if you have. Uh, part right construction, you know, the typical thing that worked in the in the, in, in the injective structure around the theorem plus the, plus the dual version of it is far away from being able to attack, attack this problem. So this is the good thing to start. Yes? Is it interesting to know how fast the integer bounds? Yes, yes, that's a good question, yes. Uh, the, I mean, uh, we, we were quite uh, surprised by the complexity, we were surprised by the complexity of this result because uh, by the complexity of the moves in this result. In this result, we had to invent three different uh, versions of the hell Jewett theorem uh, for, the, <laughs> for, the, for the trees. So three different versions. One version for the tree with the point inside, with the tree with the point on top of it, and, and, and simultaneous versions. So each of them gives you the usual, uh, so at the moment is the Ackermann level. So it's a double or triple induction, so on that level we are. So we definitely not primitive, our proof don't give primitive curves so at the moment. And I, yes, it would be difficult. We had enough uh, trouble with this uh, to conjecture that you can actually prove it, but I will not be surprised if tomorrow somebody looks like some from quite different angle. So at the moment, we are at the Ackermann level, several uh, induction, several parameters. And by the way, this is the good that you mentioned is because somehow uh, this tells you why would, uh, typically when you, uh, when you think, uh, typically you, you think when you in, in the, from the experience with Ramsey theorem, typically Ramsey theorem is easy to prove infinite because of this fact. Uh, but here is opposite. The reason is because you have uh, many more parameters to, to go induction on. While if you have an infinite, there is only one direction you are going, only one parameter. <laughs> so meaning that if you don't really understand your situation, uh, it's, it's meaning the induction. Here we are doing induction on several of these. And that was the why, why, we, why we achieved the first finite form. Of course, infinite one implies this. Of course, without bounds, without real bounds. But the infinite one is much is stronger than this one, uh, but uh, is uh, much much more subtle. And there, you actually need uh, new ideas.
Okay, I can let you go. <laughs> I hope I left enough space for the next speaker. I think a few minutes, sorry about uh, three, three minutes break. Five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs>